Okay. <clears throat> I have a problem. Um, I just got a call from uh, a client. I'm doing some side jobs. Sorry, Jeff. Um, and I just got a call from. <laughs> I just got a call from him, and he's like, hey, man, I need you to make this really big change to the app. Um, you know, can you do this? And I said, sure, obviously, of course, I can do this. Um, but I've actually never tried to do this before, so I was hoping you guys can help me out with it, and maybe we can do, like, a group refactor on it. Um, and I could just maybe, or just rubber duck it. Maybe I'm just going to talk out loud and see what happens. So here's a little bit of the app. This is one piece of it. <clears throat> it's a surfboard application, uh, and you add surfboards to your quiver. A quiver is a collection of surfboards. Uh, so here you can see I have my shortboard class. Uh, we've got three fins, as most shortboards do. Uh, a stringer is the wood piece that goes down the middle of the board for stability. Uh, we always have a leash because of the shortboards. Guys are flying off the waves and swimming is tiring. Um, and then tail shape, we're just going to say we only support round uh, tails for some reason. Um, so the, the, the thing that my uh, client wants me to do is add ability to add long boards to the app. And in the current state, you can see we're pretty coupled to shortboard. Um, I, you know, short longboards normally have one fin, um, and usually you don't have a leash unless you're a kook. So, um, <clears throat> I want to build this in. The first thing that I was thinking that came to mind, like I mean, just the, the stupidest thing I could possibly think of is why don't we just add some sort of like conditional to the parts that are different, right? So. Uh, I'm going to redefine fins. I'm going to say, like, if I've got some type called longboard, uh, we'll return one fin, else we'll return three, OK? But then I have to do that to leash two. Uh, so if my leash is, has a type longboard, I'm going to return false, um, else we're going to return true. Uh, so I'm starting to notice something a little gross, right? We've got a lot of conditionals. Any, and also, anywhere we need to do this check, uh, for longboard, we're going to have the same thing. Also, if we need more types, because I'm going to guess my client is going to come back with more, um, now we have to add another little break of that. So now we've got a type fish that returns two fins. And you guessed it, same thing for leash. Now we have some special case there. So this is getting um, you know, pretty out of hand, and, and it's just, just going to get worse with more types. Uh, we could try to put lipstick on a pig and like, hey, they're totally cool case statements now. Um, but that's just as ugly and just as unmaintainable, right? So we don't like this. I don't like this. I'm going to start over. So back to shortboard. Um, what else can we do? I just learned about this new thing called inheritance. So maybe I can use that. Uh, so what if, what if longboard just inherited from shortboard and then I only had to like redefine the ones that changed? So, We'll get a long board, and I'll just throw some inheritance syntax on there. Uh, and redefine fin, looks cool, OK. And then I'll redefine leash, is false, and I'm done. So this technically works, but I don't know if you guys noticed something. A long board isn't really a type of short board, right? And with proper inheritance, uh, you say x is a y, and long board isn't actually a short board. So we're using inheritance wrong here. And I'm, I'm kind of a stickler for this, so I've got to use you know, object-oriented programming properly. So um, this isn't going to work, um, but it's kind of the way I want to go. So what can I do? What is the, what is the answer to uh, longboard is a what, or shortboard is a what? Both of those are something. Um, longboard is a flotation device. It's a surfboard, right? The surfboard, let's see. That's less generic, so let's go with that. So longboard is a surfboard. Shortboard is a surfboard. Those both work. So what if we take all the things that are shared between those two and throw them into that thing, into the more generic thing. Um, what does that look like? So let's start with our shortboard class again. I'm going to do something totally crazy and just duplicate all of longboard uh, as shortboard. So I'm going to redefine those methods, but I'm also you know, defining the ones that are uh, duplication. So <clears throat> uh, this actually might be a solution if I only had two. But um, you know, I'm, I'm expecting that my client's going to want three. Uh, maybe even more. So, <clears throat> so uh, we'll get surfboard in there, and we'll start throwing some stuff into it and start making it uh, do the thing we want. Uh, right now, we actually have to do one extra thing, and that is add that same inheritance syntax, right? So if we, if we put all the stuff in, in surfboard right now, shortboard and longboard wouldn't be able to use them. So we'll just tack on uh, a surfboard there, and we'll tack on a surfboard there. And now we can start moving stuff into our, our generic surfboard class. So I'm going to go ahead and take Stringer uh, from both of those and just pop it into surfboard. And which one else is different? Uh, tail shape, so those match. Uh, so I'm going to take both the tail shape methods and just pop those into surfboard. And this is looking really good now. 
Um, like we've got this subclasses that only implement the, the methods that make them special. And then that, that super class or the, or the generic one it just has the things that are common to all of my surfboards. And this is super easy to understand and I like easy to understand. Um, what's also great, another like, really great side effect actually uh, about this method is it doesn't clog up any of the types we already defined. So if we take surfboard and I wanna make that fish type, um, I just make a fish board class and then I fill it up with the stuff that makes him special. And I've done that, we're already done. And I haven't made it any more complex. You know, I've added another file, but um, you know, we didn't add any more uh, you know conditionals or any complexity there. Uh, I want to show you one thing that is kind of cool with Ruby specifically. Other languages can do this. Um, Ruby doesn't have like an explicit way to do it, but here's a little trick. Um, so surfboard is our generic type, and it's not really useful by itself. Uh, you would never actually call surfboard.new and want it to work. Why? because somewhere in our code we're expecting a fin, and somewhere in the code we're expecting a leash probably. Uh, so if we did use those, it would blow up. Um, and we can tell, and, and we did redefine those in shortboard and in longboard, but we can tell future us, uh, like hey, maybe pay attention to this thing um, by raising an error. So I'm gonna redefine fins, and I'm gonna say, you know what, raise a not implemented error, and something useful to me later on, like subclasses are expected to implement fins. Uh, and I can do the same thing with leash, uh, raise that same error, and say, you know, subclasses are not, are expected to implement leash. And what's cool about this is we've got this interface for our subclasses to use, so if anyone uh, who's using my app or, or developing with me or again future me goes and tries to create a fish board or any other type of board uh, and I, I'll get you know some not implemented error when I try to do that or if I'm being really you know totally forgetful and I just make a surfboard dot new somewhere it's gonna break really immediately because they're not defined um, so this is looking really good uh, we've created that generic super class it's got that cool interface for all the subclasses to use we've got those nice small specialized subclasses um, that you implement that super class interface. This is, this is looking great. Um, I think we're good to ship this. So thank you guys so much. You helped a ton, really, oh, you yeah. did. Um, and I know the client's gonna love it, so thank you again. But I've got another problem. Uh, I'm just using you guys for free uh, help here. So it's, it's two weeks later. I know it's been, you've been here a long time. Uh, and I have another client who asked me for some work. So again, I wanna use, since it works so well, uh, just now, I want to use your, your guidance again and help me work through this. So same, same kind of situation, he, he called me up, we've got this big app, he asked me to make a kind of a major change, and, and here's where we're starting. So I've got this car, it's a car app, and you add cars to your garage, but right now it only supports uh, four-wheeled, four-door cars, and he wants the ability to do trucks. Do you see where I'm going with this? Does this feel similar? It should, okay. So we just solved this problem, right? It was you know, different uh, nouns, but we just solved this. And <clears throat> what I would do in this situation is go back, maybe it's been two weeks, maybe I've done some other coding things, maybe I took a break, uh, you know, went on vacation, and I don't really remember how I did it, but now I can go back to my surfing app where I solved that problem already and reuse that implementation that I did. So I can take that approach and apply it here. And so what have we learned? What was, what was the point of this example? So uh, it takes a long time, and I mean, here it took eight minutes, uh, to arrive at a correct solution organically. Um, and that was kind of an idealized case, right? Like I, we walked through the, the ideal path. But in real life, you might have even landed at that duplicate part where we just had the whole shortboard class and the whole longboard class that was completely duplicated, and you stopped there because it solved the initial problem. Um, and that would have been fine, but again, we would have missed that bigger picture um, because we were trying to solve the pattern for um, all the types, right? So we, we were, I had in my head idea of, you know what, he's gonna ask for more types, I need a solution that's gonna work uh, for all these different types. And so we recognized that the problem was similar and we were able to apply that pattern that I discovered uh, and skip all the trial and error that it took to get there. Uh, but it takes a lot of time to solve enough problems to have that recognition of all the, all the different you know, types of solutions that can emerge. Uh, but the great thing is it doesn't have to be your time, right? And this is the power of design patterns. Um, but with great power comes great responsibility, right? 
One does not simply choose a design pattern to use. The problem chooses it. I was going to put the meme, but I, it was, I felt it was like overused, so I didn't. Um, so it's your responsibility to use the pattern that fits your problem set. And one of the biggest criticisms of design patterns is that they lead to either an over-engineered solution or an incorrect implementation of the pattern. And I think that the main cause of this um, has two reasons. One, uh, the person has an incomplete definition of their problem. Uh, or two, they're just choosing a pattern they just really want to use uh, and just forcing it into their, their problem. Uh, to answer the first reason, uh, without a complete definition of the problem, it's really to, easy to skip a pattern altogether uh, or use the wrong one, right? So if we stopped at that, uh, if, we, if, the, if in my head the problem I had was just two different types, I would have stopped directly at the short board, long board ending because that was all I knew and that was all I needed. But since my, my problem defined all these types, you know, maybe up to infinity, um, we, we arrived at a different solution. Uh, the second one, please don't do this. Um, if you're just practicing or working on a proof of concept implementation or something, it's fine. But uh, to just say like, ooh, I heard about this cool new thing called like the null object pattern, and I'm totally just going to use it right here uh, when it doesn't actually apply to the thing you're trying to solve. Um, but it's important to understand why these patterns exist. Um, design patterns give you a chance to stand on the shoulders of giants. And I really like this kind of that, that uh, you know, picture it paints in your head. We have virtually unlimited knowledge at our disposal, and we should use it. Um, programmers who have been working as long as I've been alive documenting all their findings. Uh, they've been documenting patterns on how to create objects, how to structure your application, how objects should talk to each other, um, all in this design pattern scope. Um, and using them, we can start our applications at a higher floor, right? And we do the same thing with libraries and frameworks. We use Rails because we don't want to ever write database connection code ever. Um, so why not use a design pattern to start your application design at a higher floor? Um, but when you're new, you use whatever tools you have available to you, right? Uh, maybe you grab a rock and you start pounding nails in. And then you're like, man, my arm's getting tired. I, let me get a stick. And you tie a stick to it for leverage. And then you're like, I just invented a hammer. Um, like, <laughs> you'd be pretty arrogant to like never go to Home Depot for tools, right? You're like, hey, you know, I could probably build my own skill saw. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, and design patterns are the same way. It's recognizing that just maybe another programmer has solved your problem before. So if you want to level up fast, get in the habit of finding the right pattern for the job. Uh, so uh, just some quick little resources. Where do you start to figure these things out? Um, Wikipedia has a pretty good uh, set of solutions. I like this one, actually. This is where I got most of my homework uh, done. Uh, Sourcemaking.com slash design patterns. And they've kind of re, re verbalized all the, uh, the talk, because it's very academic. Um, all, the, all the verbiage is, is really uh, software or computer science uh, talk. And I'm not that smart. So I like these guys. Uh, they kind of redid it and uh, made it. They separated them all. So there's you know, creational patterns, structural patterns, um, observational patterns, and all these. So they separated them all the categories. Really, really great resource. They have a book, uh, but the, the site is like pretty much complete. So I'm not sure what's actually in the book, because it's all right there. Um, best talk I've probably ever heard is Sandy Metz's Nothing is Something, and that is about implementing the null object pattern. Uh, super, super great talk. It's on YouTube. Um, definitely watch it. It's like, it's, it was the RailsConf uh, keynote two years ago, I think. Uh, and then a new one that actually just came out, um, Ruby Tapas and um, ThoughtBot kind of merged together, and they have this little uh, teamwork thing they're doing. That's a really long URL. Just Google Ruby Tapas. Uh, two ways to eradicate nil values or something, uh, you'll find it. Uh, but they, they have a screencast uh, about how the same, kind of the same thing. It's using the special case pattern, and they, they implemented it with the null, the null object pattern. Um, so that's where I would start. And just kind of get your head uh, around, you know, maybe not memorizing them, but just acknowledging their existence. And once you kind of start diving into it, you'll go, oh, man, I heard about this one thing you know, that might answer my problem. Uh, and level up faster. That's all I got. <laughs>